Hey, everybody, and welcome to episode number 234 of the Chris Rose Rotation, a production of John Boy Media. And for the first time in the regular season, we would like to welcome back one of our OGs, if you will, from the Los Angeles Dodgers, Tyler Glass now. Nice kitchen. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. <laughs> Holy smokes. Are you doing a lot of cooking in there or no? Not really in season. In the off season, I cook a lot more, but I've done like breakfast and stuff, and I'll cook something today after this. Like, just easy something. I had steak last night, so I'll do the leftovers. I'll oh. whip it up. Wait yeah. a second. Did you cook at home or did you go out? Because you returned. I went out. I actually Uber Eats it like a super lazy person with Megan. And then oh. we got it and I ate it and then I'll cook it again today. Okay. All right. Yeah. How is the living situation there now that you're fully moved in and everything? It's sick. I love it here. <clears throat> it's nice to be back home. I forgot how awesome it was. And I'm by the beach and stuff, so it's nice and familiar and it's, i enjoy it a ton the weather here is insane so it's perfect yeah you, well you're a nature guy aren't you enough i like the beach a lot yeah i wouldn't say i'm like in nature all the time but i enjoy it i i enjoy me some nature for sure okay do you run on the beach no i don't run i'm not really a runner i used to when i was younger but like i think i do other workouts i don't like it for my knees I'm too tall yes you are do yeah. you just sit and stare at the ocean We've done that. Me and Megan have been going to the beach. We jump in the water and then we sit there and we hang out and we eat food and we just kind of hang out on the beach. Uh, the the water for people that don't know, they think, oh, my God, it's like 80 degrees <laughs> on the West Coast. It is not. It is very chilly. The water. It's the best, though. That's what makes you feel. That's the magic in the Pacific Ocean. It's not that bad right now. It's probably like 60 something. It's not terrible. Like the cold tub at the field is way colder. So when we jump in here, it's like nothing. Have you ever surfed? Yeah, I used to in the off seasons a decent amount. I never got that good, but I haven't gone in like a few years, and I'm not gonna not gonna surf at all this season. Maybe in the off season or something, but I'm not gonna chance it. Okay, am I boring you? No, I'm just it's early. Sorry, bad sleep. <laughs> good, but it's not that early. Not that I just had not good sleep. Ten thirty. It's not early at all. Aren't? But you're a good sleeper. I thought. Some days, some not perfect. Some days is good. Some days is bad. I'm a terrible part, sleeper. Though. I'm a terrible. Are you sleeper. horrible? Do you, look at your, do you look at your phone before you go to sleep? Yeah. So I'm at the age now where I am. Fortunately, my sleep gets interrupted at about one thirty-seven a.m. because I have to go to the potty. Right. So that's all. I'm, only, I'm there. Yeah. yeah. And then like the phone's calling my name, and I'm like, really? Yeah. Why did I just do that? It's, it's <laughs> yeah. stupid. We should just turn our phones off, shouldn't we? Or just plug it into a different room. I guess you probably walk and go get it anyway. That's what I do. But the guys, when I'm like in a really bad habit with my phone, I just put it in another room, put my alarm on. And then, but I do, I have the bladder of like a 94 year old man. I pee like four times a night. It's crazy. No, you yeah. don't. Seriously. I do. Yeah. All the time. It's bad. And I can fall back to sleep though. That's great. The The worst yeah. ones are when, you know, it's not like a short, it's like forever. You're like, oh my God, how much water did I drink last night? <laughs> Seriously? Like I've been sitting here like 93 seconds. Can I yeah. get this done with? Yeah. Or I got a pretty strong stream, so I just get it out quick. I'm, I'm a 15 seconder. I just push it out and I'm ready to rock. I call that being a horse peer. That's there you go. I'm like. a horse peer. I'm yeah. a horse peer. I have a, I have a pretty steady stream for all the viewers at home. I thought I'd let share that with everyone. Good. Um, <laughs> how was your trip to Korea? Did you enjoy it or not? Yeah, it was cool. It wasn't the same as like traveling in the off season. It was more like, you know, I mean, you have work brain, like I have like stuff to accomplish and do. So you don't really get to fully like chill. But like when you have uh, like after my start, my brain was a little bit more like, all right, I can kind of like hang out and stuff. But I didn't do a ton. I walked around and for like a few hours and all that stuff, but I didn't like go far out or anything like that. But I liked that. It. it was cool. The people were super nice. The food was really good. My agent was out there, so that was nice to see him. Uh, it was fun. It was cool. I went to dinner with some people. It was a good time. It was like the first time I went to dinner with like the team and stuff too. So it was a nice bonding experience for for me. Yeah, I mean, we we tend to forget. Even you're you have such an ability to kind of immerse yourself in an area that we forget that you're kind of a newbie there yeah so who, who's become kind of one of your one or two of your bffs i don't know it's kind of everyone like the team is extremely close like everyone i think too that's what you get when you have a team that like a lot of people have been on the team for a long time like there's a like a nice history there so i just kind of just got in there and it just feels like uh it's just like 
everyone has known each other for so long. We have a group chat. Everyone talks in like consistently mm. every day. Um, I like Kike a lot. I like Joe a ton. Mookie's the man. Freddie's the man. Jason is the man. Like there's so I could name everyone. There's not a single bad person on the team. And I think that's by design too. I think Andrew's done a good job. They have like a, it's, it's a like awesome team dynamic. It's really, really cool. I feel super comfortable. It took like a week and I was like, all right, I'm home. <laughs> it was pretty easy. It was awesome. Uh, have you and Miguel Rojas bonded over your, uh, oh, duh. how did I forget Miguel Rojas? Yeah. That dude's yeah. a man. It's one of the best teammates I've ever played with. That dude does, cares so much about the team. He's just always like invested in everyone around him. He's very like, that's a good for any team that someone like him is essential. And he's like, it's just like truly his nature to be like a, just a good teammate and have everyone around. He's like, he's the Mike guy. Like he's truly like a very selfless human being. And it's been nice to play with him. Like I've seen him from afar, but to be on his team, it's been like, this is, this guy is the man. He's the best. He's the mayor. So he hasn't let you sleep through a team meeting. No, no team meeting. No, 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 <laughs> no sleeping through team meetings. <laughs> you don't, you, you don't oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Shit. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. Sorry, my bad. No, I my get. Bad. I understand. All right, more of the show coming your way, but first, you know how much I love my dog, Sydney. That's my girl. That's my little fur baby. And several months ago, we made a change to the farmer's dog. It has helped improve her health, her mood, her dog poops, which is important. Uh, the farmer's dog, it is food that is developed by vets. It is made fresh from real meat and veggies. It is portioned for your dog, and it is delivered right to your door. It isn't just fresh, higher-quality food. They also send the food pre-portioned specifically for your dog out there based on the unique nutritional needs. So it takes less than five minutes of your time, right? You go on over to the farmersdog.com. You fill out this questionnaire. It covers the basics, like uh, the size of your dog, how old it is, um, like how often it eats, how often it exercises, what it weighs, and boom, they send this awesome box to your door. You keep these packaged dog food containers in, and they're thin. They're skinny, right? They're like this big, and they're thin. So they fit right in your freezer, and then 24 hours before you need them, you move them from the freezer to the fridge, and they'll thaw out. Your dog's going to be happy as can be. Now, a fresh diet has been found to have all sorts of benefits. Healthier coat and skin, better breath, which is a big time deal, easier digestion, better poops. I talked about that. A healthy diet. It's not just important for our two legged people out there, but our four legged friends as well. So head on over to farmersdog.com slash today. You're going to get 50% off your first box. Plus, you're going to get free shipping. And this is a big deal because the box, it's not little, it's a big box. So you get free shipping. That's a good deal. Head on over to farmersdog.com slash today, 50% off, free shipping. You will enjoy it. Most importantly, your pooch will love you. They will look into your eyes and at the end of the day say, rai, rai, woo. Rai, rai, woo. I, I don't really want to focus on the Shohei stuff, but I am curious about this. While it was all going on, and we're taping this a day after the federal report came out, fully exonerating him and talking about the ridiculous numbers that Ipe mm -hmm. was gambling and all that sort of stuff. While this was going on, did you just go up to him as a teammate and be like, hey, listen, just checking in on you. Are you okay? Or did you guys just let it be? No, yeah, there was a, I mean, it was nothing like super formal, but we were all like, hey, we got your back. Like we know, I just think to being in the clubhouse, everyone like knew right away, like clearly he had nothing to do with it. Like the first thing he did was like, take my phone. Like, fit, like I don't know, like, he was like, figure this out. Like we all knew early on that Ipe was doing some shady stuff. So I think it didn't seem like he was very stressed about it either. I think when you know that you've done nothing, it's just like, it's only a matter of time before they like figure it all out. So there was no like, you know what I mean? If you had like a little bit of like, you kind of might be stressed out, but he was just cool as a cucumber. I really respect the fact too, that like he really doesn't, he's a very stoic person, like no matter up or down or anything, like you go over 30, you can have all this shit against him. And he's just like, yeah, like he's the most smiley, like genuinely not stressed out person I've ever met. And that's pretty crazy to be in like his position. It just seems like he's at like summer camp all the time. He's just the happiest dude ever. It's crazy. Even if $16 million is missing, he's still yeah, happy. Or Yeah, it's crazy. Like maybe he hides it well. And I mean, he's got a few other million to back it up. I'm sure right. he's not happy about the whole situation, but like I think he's can can like – keep his head in the lane he's currently in but 
I was like in the cage in Chicago, just like it was so cold, just hanging out in the cage and he's DHing and doing his routine. And he's just, cause I'm pretty intense when I play, he is very relaxed. Like he's just got, like, even if he comes up, he'll get out, he'll come in and be like, Oh no, inside pitch. Like he's just like, <laughs> it's, it's crazy. I'm like, what? He's just so happy all the time and very consistent. That's probably why he's so freaking good. But it's been, it seems like there has not been any mental sweat lost on his part. And it's, I'm glad all this stuff has come out so he can now just like, I would say focus on stuff. I'm sure he's going to get asked about this all year, but he'll handle it well. Well, I don't know how much more he'll get asked about it. He'll get asked about it the next time he's available because now the federal report is out. Yeah, and right. hopefully, you know, if Ipe, whenever he gets whatever punishment he's going to get, he'll probably be asked about that. Because I think that's the yeah. part we forget about it is that this just wasn't a guy he worked with. This was a guy he was yeah. very close with. I think that's probably part of the hard part with the whole story is like, how could you not know that this was happening? And I don't I think if anything, there might be a learning lesson for people. And this isn't just about athletes. This is about people who make a ridiculous amount of money like. I wonder if it'll rub off on any guys because I know there are athletes who don't check their accounts and most maybe... I'd say, yeah, most, most do not, no. right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, like don't even know how to log. Like, the whole thing is like he didn't know how to log in. It's like first of all, you have a bunch of accounts, but like most athletes that I know don't know anything. They're just like my guy's doing it, and that's it. And like it's you got to find someone you trust, but for the most part, I think it's about like eliminating stressful things i don't know i guess there is no like you do want to have like a, a grip on it and like look and stuff but for the most part guys like i don't want to like i trust you you do it like i'm not looking at any of this i don't want to worry about money i don't want to and i feel like that's pretty normal so when everyone was like i don't believe this i'm like you don't know many athletes because like i definitely believe this that's just how most people operate like in most sports has it changed the way you think about things no i mean i'm i'm kind of always like I don't like look at it every day, but I'm like on top of it. You know what I mean? Like I have like a good guy and like other people who like, look, you know what I mean? It's not like I'm just, I, I have like my checks and balances and stuff, but I also have known my guy for a long time, trust him. And, um, but yeah, it's not like I just like completely, like I know my logins and like, I know, I know like stuff. I'm not like a super big involved money guy but like i think i, I would like i keep a look at it on my accounts and stuff yeah because a lot of athletes i know have people that are writing their bills and stuff to me that's yeah. foreign like i've written every yeah. bill i've ever yeah, like had bill pay service myself. stuff like yeah like i have that too see so i guess i don't do it <laughs> you have like a bill pay service thing and like you send stuff to or they'll have like and then like everything's basically auto pay now so it's like right stuff like that but you just do your mailing address to your bill pay service and then like you guys talk over it or like, yeah, and then that's how all the stuff gets paid. Because it's tough. I think a lot of times, too, the bill service is used for, like, you travel so much. And if you ever go anywhere, they'll use, like, your rental address or this or that. So I think it's just more about, like, collecting bills that have been sent to random addresses. Like, mm -hmm. I get bills sent over to, like, nine different states just because, like, leases and, like, <laughs> people send stuff to the wrong areas. And it's just hard to keep track of. Do you, I, I always forget this with baseball. Don't you get taxed based on where you play the games? Yeah, every state you play in. So if you play like a three-day series in Chicago, you have like an Illinois state tax. And then you play like however many games in LA. Yeah, you have to file on every single state you play in. It's like a jock tax, I think, or there's a different name for it now. But yeah, you have to file in like so many different states. So that's kind of why I think a lot of times you give it to someone else just because like I don't know how to do my taxes. <laughs> yeah, I don't either. I mean, I've got an yeah. accountant. Yeah. yeah. Carly's an accountant, my brother's wife or my oh, sister-in-law. Yeah. By yeah. the way, is the baby here yet? uh i don't know if i i don't know if i can jinx it or talk about it but i think she's uh in labor currently i don't know should i talk about that on here uh, she's like right now she's in labor she's like chill we call her she's like hanging out it's it's like still early on but okay good luck yeah I so maybe wait. we can say that and that yeah if everything goes smoothly then, uh, then we'll leave it in <laughs> well I, you know what i thought about them recently because um our youngest son is is narrowing his college choices and we just went to oh, san nice. luis obispo yeah which i have you been there yeah, my cousin went there. Unbelievable. It's sick. It's really, really cool. It's by like Monterey and stuff too, driving through all that. It's nuts. It's like fairy tale land, California. Well, it's Monterey when you're coming from the north, but or I, yeah, um, I guess like relative like close enough to like when I think of like beautiful awesomeness, I think like Monterey. Like it's around that same area. It's not close, but yeah, like I've driven through there and I had a buddy play baseball there and that place is awesome. Oh, really? He played baseball Even, for the Stephen Farnsworth played there. Oh. A buddy from high school. Okay. 
and had a good experience. Yeah, he loved it. He got drafted out of there, and I know he liked it a lot. And I know everyone who's been there that I've known says it's like it's an awesome school. Yeah, it's gorgeous. I was yeah. I had never been there. It's the central coast of it's pretty much right for people that are geographically geographically challenged with California. Heck, I didn't even know where it was, and I've lived here twenty five years. It's in between. Yeah, I thought Los it was Angeles. by Monterey. Who the I don't know anything. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. so, but you've you've been living in Florida for a while, so we'll yeah, forgive true. you for that. We'll forgive you for that. Um, what an awesome job the other day. I was Thank so you, proud. Dude. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah, I felt good. Finally, everything clicked. It was good. I felt felt nice. Felt consistent. When you're in the middle of a 14 strikeout, no walk game, does it feel different than other times? Sometimes. Like sometimes it's like I can like fully eliminate all conscious thought and I'm out there just vibing and throwing and not thinking anything. And sometimes it's like I have to have like a cue or two. So I'm kind of like a little bit more cerebral and um but i i know i'm definitely aware when it's going on like this last time i like i made some adjustments throughout the week like the whole time leading up to the start i've been kind of like whacked out a little bit like across my body and i I was like was watching film and found some good stuff and then the day before that start i like kind of did the switch and it was like ooh, that kind of feels nice again to where i don't need to think about it and then i brought it into the game and my metrics like got back to where they were previously like when i'm when i'm locked in and then i just kind of was like all right cool we're there and like they have that's what's kind of nice about stadiums that have the metrics posted like they have like the x and y axis like vertical horizontal i was able to like kind of see it early and be like ooh yeah i'm back now let's not think about it like early on my slider was very like vertical and then so i like looked at the numbers and like kind of made adjustments off of that and then i almost i like found it and was like ooh that's the feeling i'm looking for and then the rest of the game i was like i'm good and I just I just kept going through the rest of the game. It felt really good. Wait a second, vertical X Y axis. I, I'm you know those numbers at the stadium, right? Yeah, like the the. Have you ever seen those? No. They have any, I thought really they have like the X and Y, like the two numbers that are like it'll be like negative three, negative five. It's it'll show like slider and the metrics and then heater metrics and then where are you some, looking? It's at uh, the Twins have it, the Rays have it, LA doesn't have it. There's a couple places. Where else? Cleveland, I think, has it. There's a few stadiums that have it. You'll look up. It's by the radar. So it's like a new thing that's happening. It's like all the TrackMan data or whatever oh the system's God. called. It's like the spin. So like when they post it, it's super helpful. It's nice. It is helpful? It's not too much when you're playing a game? No, I always like, I'm a little radar slut anyway. So I look up every time. So like <laughs> it's just like some more numbers to look at. <laughs> And it's just helpful because it's fine. I swear to God, like there's there'll be games where I'm like, well, I'm really ripping this. And I look up and it's like 94. I'm like, oh, I guess I'm not ripping it. And then the next pitch will be like 98. It's I know that sounds weird, but like sometimes like you forget. I like forget to throw hard. It's really weird. Or like I think I'm executing a pitch or I think my slider, because it looks the same. If it's 10 minus three, it looks kind of like zero minus three, like to your eye. But then you look up and you're like, oh, I'm like two behind my slider. I got to try to finish this thing. And it's almost like an easy way to get back into like, a mechanical i don't know if that's how everyone does it but it's always been that that way for me since it's been posted so i mean you were throwing 100 the other day weren't you no i don't think so i think it was like 98 like 96 98 i've kind of stopped trying to fucking grip it and I, there'll be a couple but i don't really like it's i don't know, like i'm i'm pretty i'm comfortable in the 95 98 range these days <laughs> Do you hear from more people after a performance like that than just a normal six inning, three run start? Yeah, for sure. I think just being in LA, I hear from a lot of people regardless. And it's like, I'm so new to the team. It's like some people find out late, and t but you know what I mean? Like, but for the, like a, a game like that, I got a lot of texts, a bunch. Yeah. Uh, you got to pitch obviously the first game in Korea and then the home opener at Dodger stadium mm -hmm. as well. Um, you know, you grew up here. Was yeah. it a different feeling for you being out there? Yeah, for sure. I think all my memories are associated with being in the stands, you know, and it's like such a different perspective. And then like being down there, like, and then obviously to watching bullpens, like getting there early watching bullpens and then me being in the bullpen, that's always the biggest difference of being like, I'm here now. And I used to be like, that's such a weird <laughs> feeling. But for the most part, like, I guess if you were to add, like when I first signed with the Dodgers, the idea of pitching like my first start with, at Dodger Stadium I was like ooh like that's kind of nerve-wracking like but then the as the closer it got and then like the day came it, it was just so weird like I wasn't very nervous I was the normal amount of nervous I would be if I was pitching at the trop or if I was it just like start day nerves but it wasn't any more any less it was very weird I just felt like oh 
just like a normal start. And I think too, I think that's maybe a literal bit of like a conscious, like not like you block out emotional stuff, but like, I think my whole, your whole career, you've just been like, I'm today's start day. Like I've been able to compartmentalize or whatever. And it's kind of, I was just surprised how like normal I felt and it felt really good. And it was a pretty decent game, the home opener. You know, uh, Ploof and I do this show, this one right over my shoulder, yeah. baseball yeah. today. It's our daily thing where we cover five topics. And you were questioned this week. The question was, okay. is Tyler Glass now the most important pitcher on the Dodgers staff? And, mm. well, <laughs> it, it was it was coming off of your outstanding performance, I believe. Okay. And the reason I asked it, and the reason I answered yes, Ploof did not. He uh, he said there's too many guys that it can't be just one. And I said yes yeah. because, and I said as much as we love him, we have to be honest too. Uh, the fact is you were traded. So you were traded for Ryan Pepio, part mm -hmm. of the deal. And he's a guy that we've heard about, Dodger fans have heard about for years. And so he's going elsewhere. So you're trading for something. You're not just signing Yamamoto and giving him $300 plus million. You're giving up an asset to get somebody good. And facts are facts. You've made a point of this, that you've never pitched more than 120 innings. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of a big deal, I think. Plus, you get the extension on top of all of this stuff. Does all of that add into, like, are you like, yeah, I do have something to prove this year? I get it's more I've never really like I've always been more I have something to prove to like myself there's never really been I to be completely honest looking at people like be like oh he only throws this much like he'll get hurt blah, blah blah that doesn't really like I don't know some people are like I've used that as fuel like I don't I think people are entitled <laughs> to their opinion like I think that if you look at the history of me and you and you take that as a conclusion I think that's fair I don't think it's you know what I mean? Like if I've only thrown 120 innings and you're a fan, of course you're going to be skeptical. But I think me knowing myself and knowing the condition that my arm was in prior and then now knowing what condition my arm is in, I think there's like a re reason for all like the inning limitations in the past. So when I look at it, it's like, yeah, I want to throw more than 120 innings because I know that I can. It's not really due to like people are doubting me. I'm just kind of like, it's it's always I think that's just so much of what baseball is, especially pitching. It's like such an internal battle. It's like you're trying to be the best version of yourself. Like I've never really even in my career tried to be like, well, I want to be better than this guy or I want to like have better stat. It's always like I want to I like I know what I'm capable of and I want to somehow try to fulfill as much as I possibly can to get the most out of myself. So I know like I feel my arm condition right now is so much better than it was before. Like I am confident that I'm going to pitch more than 120 innings. And I think even last year, it's not like, like the capability wasn't there. It was, I was on an inning limit regardless. I had the oblique thing in the, in the beginning of season, which is, I guess, kind of normal coming back from like a TJ thing. But I think like at 120 innings last year, I was like, I could throw a ton more innings, like knowing how much better I feel. Um, but yeah. And like, just knowing how I feel this year, it's definitely something that like, I'm just like going start to start to start to start and everything goes well, I'm going to go over 120 innings easy. Okay. Good answer. Uh, let's get to the arm stuff, unfortunately. It, maybe maybe the numbers, the Tommy John and the arm injury numbers, aren't more significant this year than past years, but it just feels that way because of some of the names that this yeah. is now claimed. And I don't know if you saw, but your comment from a couple of years ago about the sticky stuff, the removal of the sticky stuff, Mm -hmm. made its rounds again did you see mm -hmm. that yeah yeah well that's it. and that's the funniest thing too about that video like the point of me making the video is saying like i don't like that they changed the rule in the middle of season but that's that part's never in the video <laughs> like it's it's always cut short like i think my only beef with all that why i like said all that was because the rule was changed in the middle of the season like mm -hmm. i wasn't like don't get rid of sticky stuff like something had to be done if i was a hitter I've been like, this is bullshit. Like, figure it out. Like, dudes a year prior with a five ERA come in and have like 800 RPMs of spin. Like, there's something needed to be done. My only beef was with how they handled it. Um, but I, I think with the whole situation, like, I think something had to be done with how crazy stuff was. You know what I mean? Like, how, like, all the spider tack and all the crazy, you know, like, something needed to be done. And then the whole argument now is like the pitch clock. And I think it's like a multitude of reasons. I don't think, you can blame injuries on one thing. 
it's it's a mix of everything but like the mentality i've had since i was in high school like i think the shift back then was like throw the ball as hard as you can all the time that's the highest chance of you playing in college the highest chance of you playing pro if you get hurt we got good doctors like that's been the mentality for such a long time and i think if there is any sort of spike in injuries it's probably started from what year like two th- when was that all that all started in like 2000 10 ish or something in the big leagues, mm-hmm. I feel like around there. And it's probably slowly gone up. Like, so I think it's the mentality of throw everything as hard as you possibly can mixed with, there's probably a little bit of that. Like, but I think people have had enough time to adjust to whatever the thing is. People like, I don't think that's a huge issue. It's not like the sticky stuff. And then I'm sure the pitch clock adds a little bit of it. Like if you have less time to recover and say you're doing a workout and you have less to like, you you get exhausted more and more. And then the, the season is such a marathon if you have 30 starts, like you add less time onto a hundred pitches a game. Like I'm sure that adds to it, but I think the majority of the injuries is we can't deny the fact that it's like everyone is just out there like grunting as hard as you can. Like you throw every pitch super hard, but that's just what you kind of have to do now to be a big league pitcher. And everyone talks about like, you know, people need to go back to like to pitching and and kind of low nineties, like dot and corners. It's like, okay. Someone can do that, but there's always going to be a group of people that are like, nope, and and the stuff will always win. You know what I mean? Like there always will be people willing to like put their health on the line to be in the big leagues. Like the risk reward is is worth it in my opinion. So you wouldn't have changed one route of your path the way you've chased it. Is that accurate? From like being a kid to now or in terms of like, yeah, I think yes. In terms no. of, I mean, I mean, you went after velocity, did you not? Yeah. You went after high spin rates. You did. Yeah. You've done all this, right? Yeah, I would know. I wouldn't change it at all. You want to know because the times when I didn't go after velocity, I didn't go after all that stuff. I had a seven seven ERA, <laughs> so like, it's just a trade off. Like, I understand. It's like okay, we have to get pitchers to teach them like to learn how to pitch and blah blah blah. Like, I've never been Greg Maddox. I've never been able to dot like in my life, I've never been able to like I've always struggled with command until like relatively recently, my last few years. Um, so I I think the idea of me going like, all right, I'm gonna sit 92, 94 and just hit the corners, blah, 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 do all this, <clears throat> that's never worked for me. I can't do that. And I think if you ask anyone, okay, you can work this way and you can become a big leaguer and you can do all this stuff, but you're going to have, unfortunately you're going to have surgery on your arm and there's like a 90% success rate, or you can stay healthy the whole time and just learn how to pitch with like 92. 90. Like I, I think the decision of throwing hard and getting hurt is, is going to win every single time. It's not like some long, t- you know what I mean? Like this isn't like, like an awful, awful injury. It sucks and you lose a lot of time, but in the grand scheme of things, like if you put people in like the perspective of life itself, like you can make, there's a lot of opportunity You make a lot of money. You can do all this stuff. And the only negative side is you lose time. You can't contribute to your team. And then you're out for like a year. Like, I think that's everyone is going to take the throw hard, get hurt, make money type of, you know what I mean? Like, it's just mm-hmm. uh, like, logically, <clears throat> that's just the choice everyone's going to make. Okay. So is there an epidemic or not? I think it's like, it's a self-inflicted epidemic. Like people, you understand, like if you take a ball and you throw as hard as you can, like it's not like all puppies and rainbows, like things, bad things can happen. Like anyone who's ever thrown a baseball knows when you throw hard, you're kind of sore. Like, and you get used to it. Time goes on. You try to like button up your mechanics, do whatever you can to stay healthy, but it's a kind of inevitable. Like if you're going to try to throw a hundred every pitch, you have to like understand that like something will happen and i think <clears throat> with how successful tommy john is it's like the worst thing that can happen is tommy john you get it you miss a year and then you have anywhere from like a four to ten year window of feeling good again you know what i mean like i do i do yeah. so i don't know I, because i've seen uh brady's our youngest one you've met him a mm-hmm. few times he has had one or two friends that have already had Tommy John surgery in their teens. Yeah. Isn't that, is that bothersome to you or is that just part of the pro and one of them, I'm telling you, he throws upper nineties, he's 18 years old and he's going to wake forest, which is arguably the best place you can go right now. If you're a pitcher. Yeah. So I'm sure he would make that trade off 
10 times out of 10. And I'm not begrudging. I hope he stays healthy and is very successful. And I hope he makes it to the big leagues if that's what he wants to do. But not yeah. everybody has that talent. Not everybody has the build. He's a big guy, too. He's not 6'8", but he's 6'4". But yeah. there are kids that are just like, I'm going to these pitching labs at 15 years old, whether I'm 5'10 or 6'7". Like, yeah. should, should we try and draw the line somewhere? I, and it's a, that depends on what you want to prioritize. It depends on like, if you don't want to have surgery, if you don't want to get hurt and you want to. I honest, honestly, like I'm not saying you can't make the big leagues if you don't throw 95 and everything like that. But like it depends, like you've talked to kids, right? Like, you you know, kids, they're like, we'll do anything to get the big leagues. Most, that's how I was when I was a kid. If you're obsessed with baseball and you love it, you'll do absolutely anything to do it. You play football. Like, what do you, is, there's no conversation of like, should we put softer helmet? Like, I guess they're trying to figure all that out. But like, if you play football, you like football, you're agreeing to the potential of getting hurt. There are <clears> risks. <throat> yes, there are if risks. You're playing basketball, there's risks of getting hurt that way. It's just an isolated incident with baseball. And it's like a surgical type of thing that everyone is getting. But like there it's no one is forcing anyone to play baseball. No one is forcing anyone to like it's if you're a kid and you want to throw hard and go to these velo camps, you are agreeing to potentially getting hurt you're a you're you're basically trading your future ligament health for your future earnings or what you want to do with your life or your free education at college and i think personally tommy john surgery is worth a free education at wake forest and potentially like a pro career like and that's how i thought of it like i was like i'm willing to try to throw as hard as i know that's the only way that i'm going to be able to get into the big leagues because I'm not Greg Maddox and I have a six eight frame and I want to throw hard and I'm willing to do anything to get to the big leagues. And it's not like a long-term, like if you have Tommy John surgery, your quality of life is not awful when you're 70 years old. You know what I mean? Like I'm not like my knees aren't blown out. My it's like you, they're pretty buttoned up with this thing. It's a year out. It's a little mental discomfort for a year, but like in the grand scheme of things, like the risk reward is totally worth it. And that's not to say kids to just go be like, I'm going to hurt my arm. But like, I just think the the decision isn't a hard one for most kids who love baseball. Like, it's okay. just kind of how it is. Yeah. It's a great perspective individually. I think for me, we don't know right now what's going to happen with Spencer Strider. There hasn't been an announcement, right. but he is possibly staring at a second major surgery since 2019 or whatever year it is. That's a pretty short span. The sport is significantly better when he's here, when yeah. Shane Bieber's here, who's never had the surgery, by the way, when all these guys are here, then when they're not here, right? We can agree mm -hmm. on that. So should baseball be trying to do something, whether it's a trickle-down effect to the lower levels or not? I understand it from the individual side. Go chase whatever dreams you want. If it's the money, if it's the fame, yeah. if it's just the competition at the highest level, but then the sport has to start maybe thinking about protecting itself as well. Cause you don't want to have the biggest stars out for a year, 18 months. Yeah. But that's the thing. Like what it's, it's like fun and everything to talk about, but like what actually, what proof and what data is there to be able to implement within them? Like what can you actually do if you're MLB to mitigate Tommy John? Like the league didn't go, Hey, we want you guys to start throwing harder. This is like an end of it. This was like a decision on everyone's. Everyone had the decision, like they're choosing to throw hard. MLB, it's not like their fault. Everyone's getting Tommy John. It's like whatever. It's the pitching coach, the mentality. It's people being like, I want to get to the big leagues. I want to work hard. I want to do all this stuff. I don't know what they could do. What could they implement to like mitigate the risk of Tommy John? They can't be like, hey, you can't throw 97. Like you, you can't, there's literally nothing you can do. And I understand the frustration <laughs> with the pitch clock because there is like less time to recover. You feel pitch to pitch more because you don't have like when you're tired and you want to give like whatever lactic acid, well, I don't know what it is, but when you have less time to recover between each pitch, that's a little bit more wear and tear, I'm sure. But I, I mean, I don't know. I, I really, I struggle like blaming anything until I actually see like the proof or if I see like a study or like, I don't know if that is contributing in my mind. It seems like probably a little bit, but I think the velo is the biggest thing. I just don't know what they could do. Like what, do you have any examples of like what the MLB could come in and be like, do this. No. So we stop getting hurt. Yeah, no, you're right. Because I listen, I try not to be a complainer without a solution. Like I mm -hmm. like to have solutions. I think a little bit of it is incumbent on the parents. Okay. Mm -hmm. A kid I talked about 
uh, who I, whom I've known since he was six years old, and he was always great. But boy, he just took off when he became physically more mature. And he was at 14, he was throwing 90. So you mm -hmm. just knew that there was that possibility. Yeah. But yeah. then the rest of us had to be real with ourselves. Like Brady told me he wanted to pitch in college when he was 16. He was a sophomore at the time, decent frame. And we took him to one of those places where he could increase his velocity. And it's a bunch of dudes, testosterone, yelling, rah, throwing those balls, right? All that sort of stuff. I think uh -huh. we as parents probably have to try and not make the decision for our kids, but guide them to the best of our abilities. Because they're not all going to be six, eight Adonises like you uh -huh. at the end of the day and throw that. But it, I don't know. I guess I think it is more on the parents than anything else. I guess. But OK, here's the flip side. Your kid goes, I really want to play in college. I want to do everything I possibly can to play in college. And then you go to this place and you see a bunch of testosterone dudes throwing baseballs and you go, ah, I don't I don't know. I just don't think I don't want you to do this. And then he doesn't do this, doesn't play in college. Is there like any resentment? I think it's more about like your kid's 16. It's like you you choose your future. Like you're a, you know what you want to do. It's not out of the question that you want to come in here and throw really hard. Like it's I think in the grand scheme of things, the worst possible thing is that he can get hurt. And but it's not it's not like cancer. You know what I mean? It's no, Tommy right. John. It's yeah, I, like I know. And like it's like a full, it's like, do you want to go play in college? Like this is something that you love baseball. Mm -hmm. go do it go figure it out if it doesn't work out it doesn't work out it doesn't work out for a lot of people and then you go from there and you figure it out i just think like you can't or i don't i just think like going into something because you're afraid of like an injury or like do i don't i don't want you to get hurt i don't know if that's like the best way to go about it you know what i mean I, you know what i mean i, I think know. that I'm not it's a, a complicated <laughs> no but it's a it's a complicated issue from that standpoint like yeah at what point do you step in and prevent your kid from chasing a dream because there could be a health issue. Now, your point is that at the end of the day, we're talking about somebody's arm. So maybe they won't be able to throw batting practice to their right. grandkids when they're 68 right. or whatever. You're And you're a hundred percent right. Um, I guess the other argument would be like, if like Brady wants to get his license and he's 16 and it's like, ah, yeah, but a lot of people get hurt in cars. And I just think that you should take the bus. Like there's always a reason there's always injury to everything like that's i don't you know what i mean like there's mm -hmm. always a risk reward to everything and it's just like what are you willing to do what are you not willing to You're do right. you can't go through it being like you can never get hurt like there's certain things obviously you got to make decisions on but i think for the most part like i don't know like so what ended up happening did he keep going to that place or was it like you did you say like i don't really want you to go here or was it he just no. like i don't meh. yeah i mean then <clears throat> it was so far away it was like 35 miles each way so once <sighs> school started yeah. It became too much. It was fine during the summer. No problem. Get down there. But once you yeah. have school and then you have practice afterward, like you run out of time in the day when you were a junior. It's the most. I stopped going year. to those things, too. I just did it like high school baseball. I would do the stuff pre and then like in high school, I, I didn't go to any of those like below things. You kind of do it at the field. Do you still go to labs in the off season? I'll go to throw bullpens, but I'm not trying to like I have my velo. You know what I mean? Like, I, I think it's all about like maintaining now. Like I've done the work to like figure out how to throw it. And I think a lot of it's like more longevity. It used to be like getting the reps in and throwing as much as I possibly could when I was younger to get timing. But now my whole mentality is like less bullets. Like I'll even like throughout the season, I'll take like two days off throughout the week. Like I'm trying to build up days where I don't throw. Like the day after I start, I don't throw a ball at all. If I have an extra day after the day after my bullpen, I'll barely throw at all or if, if at all. So I'm just trying to like less is more at this point for me. Great. Um, my buddy Ryan Dempster was doing a uh, a thing on MLB Network the other day, and he was talking about he put up numbers of player A and player B, and it had to do with velocity and spin rate and things like that. And it was you for both of them, but it was you a little earlier in your career and you a little bit later, and your RPMs had dialed down significantly. And he goes, I don't know mm -hmm. if he, if that's a conscious decision, if he's trying to spin the ball less or whatever. He goes, I'd love to ask him one day. And I'm thinking to myself, well, guess who I can ask? Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so answer the question. Are you, is it, is this a conscious decision of you trying to spin the ball less? I think it's, it's more about like, cons you learn that like, you don't need to, you can use 92% effort and get a hundred percent results. Like the spin might not be there, but like the metrics themselves and the swing and miss themselves will be there. Like early in my career, I did not have a choice. I didn't know how to throttle. I didn't know how to, I was just trying to do well in the big leagues. 
And every throw I had was like, you go look at video of me in like 2020 or no, no, not 20, 2019. Any start. I am trying to throw the ball 50 million miles per hour. Like <laughs> I am trying so hard and it's the only way I knew how to pitch. And I think over time, the experience, the bullpens, the pitching, all that stuff, incorporating a slider was probably the biggest thing. I was able to like learn to pitch a bit more. I'm still out there trying to throw hard, believe me. Like, but it's not, I'm not trying to throw 99 every pitch. Like I'll get ahead with like 95, 96. And then if I had two strikes, I can get back to 99. But I just think I have more comfort pitching. Like I don't need to throw as hard. I don't have the reliever mentality every single inning. I'm still aggressive, but like, I just think after incorporating the slider, I can do what I need to do at 90%. And it's a relatively same velo, you know, maybe a little less spin, but like I'm basically doing the same thing with less effort. And I think it's just better mm. with like for longevity. And it's not even like a conscious thing. It's almost like subconscious. It's like, it just becomes a bit easier to like find my mechanics to where I don't need to like, it's just the days I don't feel like I don't have something back in the day. I was like, I gotta throw a hundred. Now it's like, all right, I got 96, but I can spin it and I can strike guys early. And it's just, I don't know if my priority is like to just out stuff the radar gun anymore. You know how, proud i am to see you maturing in front of our eyes he's growing up and maybe maybe i'm just fucking old you know maybe i'm just i'm starting to wash up a bit <laughs> yeah that was the yeah. first thing that came to mind the maturing yeah, part go. was way back at the end of the line <laughs> uh two other quick things and i'll let you go do what you do you can go stare at the ocean whatever you want to do to, for the rest nice. of your time um one thing is there was a picture of you next to shohei with a group of people mm -hmm. and you <laughs> are a behemoth next to him like he first of all friedman poor friedman in that shot he looks pretty big in that photo though. i think it's a photo of the the angle in which it's taken you know what i mean really? i think i'm slant look, look at like he's standing behind me i'm in front and even like friedman looks pretty big because he's the closest to the camera and i have that big puffy jacket on i'm a little yeah. taller than shohei but like that i think the scales are a, a bit weird i'm just standing closer to the camera than shohei is now he is ripped isn't he he's a big boy he's yeah He's a strong dude. Like he's no joke. I've heard in the way, like I heard all he does is play baseball and lift weights. Yeah. He's, he gets after it too. Like I think when I, in spring I saw that, like he does, he's in the weight room a lot. I think like a normal amount for in season, but in spring and like, yeah, especially I think being a DH, like he does, he lifts a good amount of weights and he hits balls far. He does. Yeah. Pretty awesome. It's a big boy. Uh um, do you know what June first is this year in terms of at Dodger Stadium? No. June first. Well, it's Glass Now Bobblehead Day. Oh yeah, nice. Ooh, that's cool. What do we think? I think it's sick. I think I remember. I think my dad said it too in an interview. He's like, I think that, like you really like that's when you realize you've made it if you have a bobblehead. <laughs> so it's like. It's cool, especially being in LA. I had one in with the Rays and then having one here now, it is cool. It's like those little reminders that like, this is pretty cool. It's kind of a surreal feeling to have a bobblehead day at your opening or like at your at your stadium. Look at that. You've made it. You've done it. <laughs> That's a Got sick it. one too. That's a good one. That is really one. cool. Yeah, I had another one. I don't know where. I think my kids. You got all sorts of bobbleheads there, don't you? Uh, I had that one, and I have an NFL Network one where I my body has never looked better. They were probably like, <laughs> "Oh my god, we can't have the child birthing hips on this bobble." Man. Nobody <laughs> want that thing. So I look, I look nice and lean, and all that sort there of you stuff. Go. It feels, nice. it feels good. Now, do you nice. when because you're going to have to get a full box of those for the family and friends and stuff? Right? I think so. I got to ask. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they leave you a few though. Like if you under the rays, they would give you like a box. I'm sure I'll get a box for. The LA ones too. Yeah, I'll definitely have them. I know my family will want them and stuff. Now, I would like to put in a request for one. I obviously I'll grab one. you one. Yeah, because Absolutely. I I would say I would come to the game, but that's the day Brady graduates from high school. So if I have to choose mm. between Glass Now Bobblehead Day and Brady Rose graduation, <laughs> it looks like you're going to a graduation. <laughs> yeah. Did you did you uh, do you remember anything about your high school graduation? Yeah, actually, I kind of vividly remember it, weirdly enough. It was kind of cool. And, like, I remember the years prior, people would sneak in, like, beach volleyballs and stuff. And I was like, oh, dude. And they, like, got super strict my year. And they were like, if you are caught bringing in any beach volleyballs, and like, you're, you're not going to be able to walk. You're not going to be able to graduate. And I was like, I'm doing it anyway. 
and I snuck it into my sliders, and I, I ended up not being able to blow it up. One year, someone um, got Party Pete at the adult sex shop, and it's like a five foot huge inflatable dick, <laughs> and they blew it up, and they're like passing it around. And I, I remember watching that like a few years prior, and being like, "I can't wait to graduate. I want to. I want to buy a big inflatable dick and hit it around. Like that's the only reason I wanted to walk." So I brought, I snuck all my inflatable toys in, and I, they were security was gnarly, and I couldn't do it. But I remember it. It was cool, like being around your friends, and it was awesome. I just wish I could have gotten the dick through there. <laughs> was that a Ted's graduation or what? I think it was Ted's or a year prior. I forgot who did it, but I just remember it was like part Pete, and it was like a huge dick, and we thought it was so funny. And so, and like you'd take your gown and you'd like blow it up under your gown and like sneak it under, and it was awesome. It was so many going back and forth. And I think the principal and like the superintendent were like, we got to crack down on this. This is a joke. <laughs> that is incredible. Oh, my That's God. So it, you nailed the ending. You were oh, the yeah. ultimate, with all due respect to Mariano and Rivera, you were the ultimate <laughs> show closer. That was impressive. Yeah. All right. Um, we'll do this uh, some point closer to Tyler Glass now bobblehead day. Sure. Now I'm now I'm not going to be able to get through Brady's graduation without thinking of that story. You know, you that. show him that clip and let him let him make the graduation fun for everybody. Well, it's going to end up shop. <laughs> yes. Well, one of his uh, buddies will have it show up on his TikTok. I know it, and then they're going to oh, be like, yeah. "Oh, I know what we're doing for graduation." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I hope I can start a, a wave. I hope I start a movement across the nation. You started more than a wave, my friend. <laughs> Woo! All right, oh. keep uh, keep throwing gas and. All that sort of stuff. Keep doing your thing. Keep enjoying the beach. Keep having just a great life. God, Glass you, Mountain man. life is so damn good. Well, and hopefully, so. I'll see you at some point. <laughs> By the way, it yeah, surprised us sure. when I saw you at um at the exhibition game at home against. I was like, "Is that Glass now?" Oh, yeah. And I turned, you know, Brady's like, "No, that's not him. His hair's up." I was like, "No, I think that's him." As you were leaving, yeah, how often do you wear bunny. your hair up? Yeah, you were man bunny frequently. I do it all the time. I can work out and stuff. I wear it up all the time. It looks a little weird, but it's more about convenience. It's just have you like, have you ever worn it up in a game? No, I don't. I have a hat on. I don't really need to. It's only really out of like necessity, I guess. I just don't want my hair in my face when I work out, so I just put it up. Got it. Got it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Good enough. This is a lot of fun. Uh, shout out to our amazing producer, the one and only Robbie Shiraco, and for Tyler Glass now, who has all sorts of party tricks at a high school graduation near you. I am Chris Rose. We will see you next time here on the Chris Rose Rotation, a production of John Boy Media.